Corporate finance, practice problem in OneNote. Present value of an annuity. You want to find out corporation, exercise corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you would like to follow along in OneNote, you're not required to, but if you have access to it and would like to, we're in the tab on the left-hand side. We're in the practice problems. We're down here in the 923 present value of annuity section. Note also when using OneNote, you might want to check out the immersive reader and we may have complemental presentations or tabs in OneNote in the practice problems as well as in the text practice problems down here with the same numbers. Those often have in the transcript for this presentation which could be read in English. You can also listen to it with this tool. You can convert it to multiple different languages and either read it in English and or Spanish in that tool as well. I'm going to close up this top tab then. We're going to have our information up top. We'll do the calculation for it in a table type format or a mathematical format I should say and then we'll do a running balance type of situation breaking down the annuity to present value of one calculations which is a critical skill to have one a little bit more difficult to do without excel but if you have excel or some other spreadsheet very easy to do we'll take a look at the excel format for it to do the calculation as well and then we'll do the table calculation as well so going up top we got our annuity here we're going to receive per year we're imagining we're going to be getting per year the 11,000. So you could think about a situation where you like won a prize or something like that. And it's going to be given in the form of an annuity or something like that. Or a situation where we're putting money in to an investment in an even fixed amount. And then the years are going to be 18 years. We're going to do this for the periods of 18. We're going to assume the rate of the 14%. We would have to determine that rate, of course, in practice. That's going to be the, one of the unknowns that we don't really know that we need to figure out in order to do the calculation. So if we were just to, going to think about how much money we would either get in like a, like a lot or like if we won a prize or how much money we would have if we were to invest the 11000 without any increase in value, the 11000 times 18, we would have the 198 now let's do the calculation for an annuity, taking into consideration the 14%. Our formula is going to be up top. That's the first time, that's the first way we will take a look at that. That's going to be P times 1 minus uh, 1 plus R to the negative N over R. I'm going to put this into a table type of format as I do so, and I do recommend practicing this in Excel. I know this is a little bit more unusual to something that you might do in a classroom where you're doing something in paper and pencil. You would write this down algebraically, but putting together tables like this useful to do if we want to break down this formula into a table it's useful to do in practice you would take then then p times this enter column here and then we're going to break out the numerator in more detail in the inner columns as well so i'm going to take p is going to be first in our table we're then going to be taking a look at one i'm going to pull into the inner column here for the numerator and then we'll take a look at the one plus r to the negative n so we're looking at the numerator now one here in this column and then we're going to break out in the inner column one plus r to the negative n so one plus r 14 percent is 114 percent be careful about the decimals and the percentages if i do this in a calculator it'd be something like one plus 0.14 is going to be 1.14 or 114 percent if we move the decimal places two places over we're going to take that to the negative n note that if you're going to use an excel calculator here i'm sorry a windows calculator in our computer windows operating system calculator we have a scientific calculator that allows us to do that and that, so we take the 1.14 and then we're going to hit the caret up top to the power of and I'm going to say 18 and make that a negative with this little item down here the negative 18 and then equals that gives us about the 0 0.09456111 and so on and so forth and then we're going to take that and now we've got this one minus that amount so if I pull over the trusty calculator we're going to say all right now take into consideration the rounding that we have here let's go back to the normal calculator normal calculator and then i'll make it a little smaller and now we're going to take the one minus the 0 0.09456 and that gives us about this number here and then if i go on back down again now we have the numerator and the denominator as one number so we'll divide those two out now so we're going to take that and divide it by the 0.14 which is the rate 
and that's going to give us then our six uh, point uh, four six seven and so on about taking that then now we've got the p up top times that so we're going to multiply that times the eleven thousand times the eleven thousand that's going to give us the seventy one one forty one sixty three about now note that this number right here is basically the number that we would expect to see in the tables when we use the tables although the tables will then use that and calculate it out to only three or four digits making it a slightly different result so if we go back down, we can do a similar kind of process. So this then is going to be the 71,141 compared to, you can kind of compare that to how much we actually put in or how much you know money we would get 11,000 times the, or times the 18, which would be the uh, 191 or 198,000. So it would be 198,000 for the actual payments valued then on the present value at the 71. 141.63 due to the annuity type of payments. Let's calculate this down. This is a useful tool to have as well is to take that idea of an annuity payment, which is something that we can simplify down to an annuity due to the fact that it is even payments. But if we can then we can also think about an annuity as 18 series of present value of one calculations which would be quite tedious to do if we were doing it with a mathematical formula, which is why the annuity is useful. But if we have Excel and we use the Excel formulas, it's easy for us to make a running balance table with this. And when we make more complex type of scenarios, such as a scenario, if this were an investment, for example, where we put, we put you know, different amounts in, uh, in the future, instead of having it fixed at 11, we're going to put 11 for five years, and then we'll put like 12,000, and then we'll put like 15,000. Then... Uh, we have a, a more complex scenario and we cannot use a, a annuity calculation for the entire thing but we can easily break it down to a present value of one calculation for the entire thing and or use some type of combination between the annuity calculations where applicable and the present value of one calculation so it's really useful to be able to visualize that once you understand the calculations you can use something like excel in order to apply the proper calculation so if we were to do this i'm good i'm going to imagine that we're using like in a financial calculator or excel to get to the present value calculation and then we could basically just run our periods i'm going to run from periods one down to period 18 and do our calculation here we would then say the payment is the 11,000 originally put in if it was going to be put in a year from now we can do a normal present value calculation not an annuity calculation i won't do it here we're going to imagine we're doing it in excel or a financial calculator but we can do the present value of one calculation with the difference being that I'm not bringing it back 18 periods. I'm only bringing it back one period because I'm going to have this, the transaction each time period. So that's going to be then valued at the 9, 6, 4, 9, 12 about. And then in period two, we're going to have then another 11,000 that we're going to put in because it is an annuity. We could then do a present value of one calculation. And we could take that one and bring it back two periods back to the current day. So obviously the present value would be lower than the present value of the first payment that we put in there just one year out, whereas this one's two years out. And then if we take that 964912 plus the 8464, we get to the 18113.27. If we continue on with this, of course, then the third period, we put in another 11,000. If we do a present value of one calculation, which is quite easy to do in like an Excel format, which we'll do in a practice problem, highly recommend taking a look at it. Then we're going to get something that's going to be slightly lower again because the periods that we used this time were three years out instead of uh, one or two or 18. And therefore, if we get something a little bit lower, if we take the 18113.27 plus that 7425, we're now to the 23537.95 and so on and so forth for 18 periods. And then at the bottom line of this, we get to the 71,141,63, which is the same as the amount uh, we got here, 71,141,63. Now, you might say, why, what, why in the world would I do that when I can just do the annuity formula? Well, one, it gives you a little bit more transparency. It tells you what is actually happening uh, in the running balance type of format. And two, like we say, if any of these payments become uneven, say payment five here, you're imagining that if it's an investment, we're going to have more money. We're going to put like 15000 in at this point in time. Well, then you can do that a couple different ways. You can use this running balance calculation 
and then just change the payment at this point to 15 or you can use an annuity for the first four periods because it'll work for the four periods and then in the period five you can have to switch things up possibly because that's where you're going to have a, an adjustment to the payments that you'll have at that point so you could have some combination in a more complex scenario of annuities for for part of the complex scenario and present value of one possibly for part of the scenario and it, if there's a problem at any point if it's a complex scenario you can always break it down to present value of one calculations even though you know it becomes a, a longer uh, more exhaustive thing to look at and then you can combine them in together where an annuity formula would fit and try to find the combination that would work best for your analysis as well as presentation type of analysis if you're trying to explain something complex like present value investments long-term investments or long-term planning to somebody else you can also do this with of course the annuity calculation down here so this is just what we will do in excel highly recommend taking a look at excel but just a quick look at it we can magically get the answer with something like this similar to a financial calculator which would be equal to negative present value we're going to use the same present value as whether it's annuity and annuity or a present value of one we would then take the rate here in our calculation which of course would be the 14 percent we're talking years now if it was in months be careful because you'd have to divide that by 12 for the months number of periods would be then the 18 that's where b3 would be and then we're going to say the payment amount is going to be the 11,000. we use the payment amount in this calculation because it is an annuity if it were a pre a a present value of one we would put a zero there or just two commas and use the, then the future value this being an annuity we use that format notice that that allows us to use the same present value calculation for the present value of one present value of an annuity just altering between whether we're using this payment or the future value component of it that once again of course gets us to the magic result of this number note most people when you're talking to people that are dealing with some financial situation magically put this number in and they get to this balance and they don't really possibly have a real understanding of what the balance is or how they got there or anything like that and so it, it is useful to have to think about things in terms of a more complex basically a table of, of items that have and, and be able to think about how the present value of one is is similar to the present value of an annuity and whatnot and all that kind of stuff and then if we do this with a table same kind of thing with the table you just got to make sure you're picking up the proper table which would be the annuity table now so we have the eleven thousand we're looking for 14 percent 18 periods so we got the 14 percent here 18 periods is going to be down here somewhere there it is 6.4674 so there's the 6.4674 once again calculating out to the 71 141 40 this not being as exact as this number those two numbers being different however small amount of difference therefore the table is probably good for normal types of decision makings it is rounded because we can see of course the table is rounded to four digits that's what's resulting in the difference make sure that you're aware of that and if someone is asking a test question for example is asking about these calculations they may force you to round the calculations to a certain decimal to try to force you to use whatever method that they are trying to get you to use and you need to be aware of that so that uh, so that you get to the proper number and find the right answer on the excel sheet obviously either method would be close enough most likely for most normal pra in practice decision making purposes